Hey everyone, I'm Melissa from Knitting the Stash and this is episode 66 in the series. Welcome, welcome. It's lovely to see you all again. Uh, and for those of you who are new, welcome. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the cast. Uh, this is a cast mostly about uh, knitting, a little bit of spinning, and lots of garment modification, DIY, and design. Uh, it's kind of what it's evolved into. Um, we're actually in the midst of a Knits in Translation Cal, and if you want information about that, you can head on over to our Ravelry group, which is just under Knitting the Stash over on Ravelry. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in this episode. Uh, let's see, I'm coming to you from Urbana, Illinois. I'm a professor at the university there, and we're in that part of the semester, which is kind of like uh, sloshing toward Thanksgiving, is what I like to call it. So uh, a couple weeks left, I've got a conference next week, and I'll be in California for, I think, 36 hours, which will be a little bit of a wild trip. Um, and then Thanksgiving happens, and I get to go back see my family for a little while, and yeah, so we'll finish up the semester. I'll survive. It'll be okay. Uh, what else should I tell you? Where you can find me. If you're new, especially, um, I'm on the interwebs of social medias and whatnot, uh, as Knitting the Stash pretty much everywhere. So here on YouTube, over on Ravelry, on Instagram, and on the blog, uh, which I usually put right here, which is knittingthestash.wordpress.com. And that's where I post all the show notes. So if you're ever looking for book titles, designers, links to patterns, links to mills or yarn shops or things like that. I always put that over on the blog for each episode, so that's your resource. <laughs> um, I can actually tell you what I'm wearing today. The last few casts it hasn't really been cold enough to put wool on, so I got my wool on. This is the Nordsea Jack uh, by Albina McLaughlin, and I'll stand up so you can see it. It's a kind of nice cropped little jacket. And uh, she, uh, in her version, she has some fasteners on there. But I found that I just kind of like to wear it open. And I'm kind of surprised because usually I'm so cold that I want like a collar and I want this thing knit shut and <laughs> everything else. But I've been wearing this for the last few days, just like this. Um, I wore it to work and then around the house on the weekend. And it has been just, I'm just like, it's like getting a big hug. I'm so happy about this. Um, and this is from her Facing North collection. And I helped her test knit this pattern. Uh, and I'm not sure if the Facing North, this is a little booklet. Um, which has, I think, seven other patterns in it. I'm not sure if this is still available, but um, I think some of the individual patterns might be up on Ravelry. Um, and I, you guys know, if you've watched a while, like, I love Albina's designing, and I'm actually doing another test knit for her uh, starting now, pretty much, until January. So she's one of my favorite designers, and uh, I love to work with her and test knit with her. And speaking of test knits, here's your call. I need test knitters, but it's a really short turnaround. Um, I'm doing a pattern for um, my friend Kathy's new yarn, which I will also help launch in the next week. Uh, and I did a beautiful little hat pattern. And this is the Rose Cottage Cap. And the pattern will be released next week when I release or I do the yarn launch for Kathy and I'd love to have a couple of test knitters. I've test knit this, I have a couple local test knitters, but um, because of the decreases in this hat, I want to make sure that it is totally legible to anybody who wants to knit it. So if you're interested in test knitting, shoot me an email at knittingthestash gmail.com and I just need a few of you and I can at least offer copies of the finished pattern and maybe some other little thank you um, for trying to get this done in a week so if you're if you're up for it I'd love to have you join me in a test knit for this hat yay and for the rest rest of you who are not interested in test knitting the hat will be released next week which will be really exciting I'm very excited um, okay so that's all business stuff and I think we're going to jump into some of the actual content of the cast, and let me tell you what we got today. So today, I've got Spencer as a guest on the cast, and we're going to talk about yarn weight, and we're going to talk about some other things that he's going to surprise me with. I have never have any idea what we're going to talk about when he comes on, so we'll do that first. And then uh, we're going to continue our Knits in Translation series. I have a segment on designers and on books for Norwegian knitting. So it's it's the segment you've been waiting for because we've talked about sweaters, we've talked about yarn, and now we're ready to talk about books and designs. Um, I have some uh, awesome yarn to share, share that um, my friend in Norway, Leila, sent and uh, more about that too. And finally, I have a massive giveaway from Dawn Brown of Independence Wool down in Texas. I did a blog spot with Dawn 
think last weekend and she sent a box of yarn and some other goodies and so if you can hang out till the end of the cast we'll talk about the giveaway and I want to show you how her yarn swatches up because it is gorgeous we're talking mohair 100% mohair we're talking about Texas Tweed Light which is an amazing like farm local yarn down in Texas so it should be pretty fun so let's switch over to Spencer now and then move on to the other stuff here we go Okay, everybody, we have Spencer, a special guest on the podcast Nice today. to be back on the cast. He's my dude, and he's also a handyman, and he has Sometimes his own knitter. YouTube channel, and he does knit, so this is why we invite him back. Actually, he invited himself and asked <laughs> if he could be on the cast. <laughs> I was getting frustrated uh, again. About knitting? No, knitting's good. Knitters? I always get frustrated by the names of the oh, different yarns. That's you want to talk about yarn weights. Not so, not the not like oh not just not the title of the yarn but like DK sport weight. Uh -huh. I she was wearing this sweater. This the same one. Yeah. The last couple of days. It's warm. And I was like, that's a thick yarn. What is that? She's like, it's bulky. I was like, it's bulky. So <laughs> what's the name of the thicker one than that? Chunky. Chunky. <laughs> is it really? So do you get, is there like a, a manual for all this? Or? Okay, so the Craft Yarn Council did come out fairly recently. What's the Craft Yarn Council? I don't actually know. <laughs> okay. The Craft Yarn Council. It's like the NCAA. The man, the powers that be, the right. woman, the Craft Yarn Council. Came out with what? They have, they've come out with this standard, like what they say is a standard thing. So they go and they say it's numeric. So it's like okay. zero to seven. And if you look at their little chart, which I'll put okay. on the screen. It's like zero is like super, like lace weight. Lace weight? All the way up. And then you go like. What's, the, what's one? Um, let's see, I wrote it down. One is super fine or sock. Two is fine or sport weight. Three is light or DK. No, we're really good. Light do or it. DK? What kind that's of That's not a I standard. Call? Four is medium or worsted. Five. Or it, worsted? Well, that, these are the names. All Five right. is bulky slash chunky. So that's this. Slash then get, chunky. Then you get six, which is super bulky, seven, which is jumbo or chunky. <laughs> so how big is that? Like a rope? I it's, I think it's more like roving. Now, like, do those numbers correspond with needle size? No. Ah. See, this is the problem. When how I many it needle out, sizes are there? Oh, many. Like many. Like seven or eight. All the way from like, I think there's triple zero, double, at least there's a double zero all the way up to like, well, mm. I mean, in, in a regular interchangeable set like maybe a 13 or a 14 okay. but All they right. do make those really okay. like huge display needles that people try right. to no we have we we being the I'm kind of disappointed in the yarn council now because that doesn't <laughs> help it's like zero and then it's bulky and, well, chunky and, and then there's the uk system well how is that totally different so the uk system is like a two ply a four ply or an Aran weight and Aran. two ply is that an island yeah yes the yeah. Freak. <laughs> two ply is like really fine and then Four ply is kind of like, um, what is that, sock weight? Is that right? I think that's sock weight. And then, uh, or a DK weight, and then Aaron is like worsted. Because hmm. you'd use Aaron to make Aaron sweaters with all the cables. Oh, no, I, I do that. Yeah. Okay, so I didn't actually help. That's there. cool. No, that's interesting. Hmm. I mean, my sense is that communities have specialized stuff to kind of identify themselves and. To make it hard? Kind for of. For other people to break Excellent in. People a little bit, maybe. <laughs> that's awful. We well, don't want to communities just do that, you know. Well, but also you feel like you feel like you have membership and ownership once you, if you learn it. You learn but the code. Even those of us who have been knitting for years, still like, don't still know. don't know. I mean, you kind of know. You kind of learn like all the different terms for the different yarn. Yeah, yeah. But really, yarn weight is about like if I look at this yarn. I'm just gonna pull some yarn over here. Like this is the. Um, I'm Stuff I'm knitting my Norwegian sweater out of. I like how she just kind of reaches over and yeah, there's just yarn. tons of yarn. So this says it is a uh, yarn spec. Four millimeter needles is suggested. That's often how you know what the but yarn weight the, is. But what's the, is this worsted? This is more of like a DK weight, and they call it a double knit DK, double knit That's weight what DK stands yarn. For. So in U.S. terms, that would be like a three? You gotta translate. Yarn council? All right. Basically, you just so knit it up. This is kind of confusing. Okay, and here, according, <laughs> like the needle size thing is really actually pretty interesting because Kate Davies put out a um, blog post a little while ago um, basically saying why she doesn't have recommended needle sizes that go along hmm. with her patterns because she's like, you have to swatch. My needle size is oh, not your needle right. size, so if you're using whatever yarn you're using. And you get that a lot with your swatches. Yeah, you just have to. So 
needle size sometimes helps. If, but it's needle size, I mean, according to Kate Davies and a lot of us who knit a lot of swatches, it's just well, like a recommendation. Good. This is good. I had, I had so, a question, and I, I'll leave this room completely befuddled and confused yay. more so than ever. <laughs> can I mean, I, what's your question? Can I ask another question? Please do, <laughs> because I don't have actually any answers as <laughs> <Okay>. it turns <laughs> out. <laughs> okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you an option for your question. Is this like truth or dare or like, sort of. like chance? Or do you want a controversial question, Ooh. or do you want... A kind of straightforward. Can we do both? Scientific. Well, I mean, if you have time or whatever. Let's do. Let's do straightforward first. Okay, I'm straightforward. Scared. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Your straightforward question no, is usually pretty. No, this is totally straightforward. Instead of using the word color, which is pretty much universally used, you guys say colorway, and uh, it's kind of it's kind of cool, like in the autumn leaf colorway. Oh boy. This, no, is, <laughs> this is knitted in the spectacular chameleon colorway. I hope colorway. all you knitters who are watching right all now are just so, chuckling a lot. So, so I what does that mean? Like, why isn't it just color? Why don't you just say blue? Knitted in purple, knitted in orange. Like why do you say the color way? Like what is that? Why don't you just say what color it is? <laughs> because it's all mo mottled? Muddled? Muddled? Well you know what I mean. Ooh. Like it's like Got a bunch of different colors in it. Well, like variegated. Is that what a colorway is? That now we're back, now we're on the terms for colors and variegated. Yarn. Why not just say the color of the thing? You know, I've wondered that too. But I kind of <laughs> damn, you don't even I get, know. I kind of think. Okay, here's what I think. Okay. Oftentimes, dyers will have like a mood board, or like a yeah, yeah. you know, like to kind of like get it's the. Got, it's got like blues so, and greens. Yeah. And so I think of like a color way is kind of like an, a, a way of like capturing this <laughs> yeah. mood. Yeah. So it's not, it's not just yeah. like, it's not so simple as like this is purple. It's not just blue. Cause it's not just blue. Yeah. It's not just purple. It's like, it's, it's a got complex. like a, it's got, it's, it's like blue dyed on top of a, a bunch of tones. gray and it's like heathered okay. and it's this. So it's okay. kind of color way kind of captures that whole like, okay. Menu of the but you still wouldn't now. call it the blue color way. You call it the blue bird. Singing in the mountains colorway. Maybe. <laughs> but I also just think to myself, like that yarn I just held up, I'd be like, it's purple. It's purple yarn. But the other thing is like some people like what this What do they is, call it? They call it by numbers and it just has a number. Like this Ooh. color just has a oh, number. Oh, that's cool. Wood stain works that way. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. It'll and be called mahogany, get... but you can look at the number and it'll be like a 43. Right. And that way you can tell the gradations, yeah. right? Yeah. So like if you want something that's They're just one grade more. down, like in his, this is the John or Bond stuff. If you go one down or one up, you do get just like a little, a little lighter iron. purple, a little darker purple. Yeah. So you can kind of actually. But a color way you would think incorporates multiple colors. Yeah, I think it's it's more complex yeah. than just like Bunch of tones. throwing some purple dye and some white yarn. It's like a box of chocolates instead of just a Hershey yeah. bar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'll go with okay, that. Okay, here's the okay. controversial that question. That wasn't controversial. Okay, what's right. your controversial okay. question? All right, so I came here on the podcast mm -hmm. wearing a fleece hat. Oh, yeah. And a sweatshirt, not like a, a sweater. It should have put him in his wool. No, I, but wool. I did that on purpose. Oh, okay. It was, it was kind of what I was wearing, but... <laughs> All right, so... But you've also said you've been very cold. I've been a little cold lately. You need to get your woolly on. <laughs> so, is there any proof... That that wool is actually better than yes. others. <laughs> I didn't get to finish that <laughs> sentence. Because <laughs> there's all this high tech stuff, uh, you know, Gore-Tex and fleece and REI, all that stuff. It's synthetic. It's got. It'll do this. It'll do that. So what's the deal? Like, there's. All right. Wool is like insulative, waterproof, antimicrobial. I mean, it is like <clears throat> it's like everything. So if you actually want to be warm, put wool on. But that doesn't sound like proof. That's just you saying it. Like it's no, it really. That's that's the deal. And because of what happened in the industry with the use of like synthetic plastic polymers and things in the fifties and sixties, wool was uh, the wool industry was kind of like pushed down by those corporations who wanted to bring up things Sell like fleece and plasticated, you know, synthetic yeah, fibers and, and stuff. stuff. And so even now, there's kind of a campaign to kind of say that wool is like it hurts sheep or that it's not clean or that it's like expensive, whatever it is. And and all of those things have hurt the wool industry to the point where a lot of us are trying to bring it back, mm -hmm. like to buy local yarn, to support the industry, to not buy synthetic stuff. Um, but what's so but good about it? It's just that it has it does characteristics in the, the nature of the fiber. Yeah. 
it just does all this stuff and it's like that's that's been forgotten over the years or a lot like a lot of that knowledge has been lost yeah. by like the regular folks out there who don't yeah. know but but the thing is it, it really is it's like you think you need Gore-Tex because you think you need water yeah. repellent but you just need wool with lanolin in it and you just if you're looking for something that isn't going to get all stinky and sweaty and gross wool it's ant antimicrobial it's not going to get smelly and gross it gets and you a little can, smelly when it gets wet just because you don't like that smell. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it just it smells like it's something wet sheep or whatever. Yeah. So wool is awesome. It's amazing stuff. <laughs> like, I am a huge wool proponent, man. I am... Yeah, you regular. pretty much wear it all summer long and, it's and then all winter long. Yeah, because it's breathable. That's one of the other things about it is, like, yeah. you can yeah. wear it in the when it's kind of warmer or when it's cooler and it will... Kind yeah, of works each way. It'll, yeah, it goes both ways. Good stuff. Yeah. I mean, think about the sheep that we had. They were super happy out in their pasture. They were a little hot all in the summer summertime. Long. They were a little hot good. in the summer. But. All right, those are my uh, questions for you. So I thought we were just talking about yarn weight, but he came up with some pretty good questions. I just had some other questions. Yeah, well, you're always welcome on the cast. <laughs> it's nice to have you. Have a good rest of the cast. You guys are talking about uh, books in Scandinavian or yeah. Swahilian or whatever. Scandinavian this time, but maybe Swahilian. And it's in translations. Yeah. Kind of cool. She's been coming home with books from other. I've got some places German stuff. All I've got the some time. German stuff. Yeah. It's been a little bit interesting. Well, you like you like all the. I books. like the one where they pass the log. That's a good one. There's, there's, a, you'll see. There's it. a book with a cover where there are two people passing along it's, to each other. I think they're collecting firewood. But he looks, actually held it up to me and said, "When can we, when can we play?" It looks past pretty the good. Log? There's some interesting stuff. All right. Good luck with the cast. Thanks for having Thanks me for on. on. See you later. See ya. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed that segment with Spencer. It's always fun to have him on, and he always surprises me with something. It's kind of like a little micro version of our lives, <laughs> which is uh, a wonderful thing. So we have, we have a good, we have a good little thing going. I think. Um, so let's move on to some Norwegian knitting because that's what we've been working on. We're working on some knits in translation and Nor Norwegian knits are, have been the first of hopefully many knits that we'll talk about um, in this year of the cast. And if you want to get into the um, knits in translation cal, you can go over to the Ravelry group and jump in there with patterns, questions, advice, suggestions. If you speak another language and you want to help people who are knitting patterns in another language, that is awesome. It's a space for it. So I really hope to build a little bit of community this year of people who are knitting around the world, all kinds of different patterns. Anytime that you're knitting a pattern that's not in your native language, there you go. So it can be, if your native language is something other than English, you can knit a pattern in English. And if your native language is English, you can knit a pattern in any other language. <laughs> um, patterns in translation. So go for it, help us help each other, and it should be a really fun year. So many of you know that I've been working on the Rosenblum Yense, which is this guy. I'm pulling out of all the stuff here. This guy. And it's a beautiful color work on the bottom sweater that then turns into lace and cables on the top. And I've knit up the body and I've been working on the sleeves and last time I was on Sleeve Island. I'm still a little bit on Sleeve Island, but this is the new sleeve that I've been working on. And I think the, the increases are going a little better and uh, my pattern is going a little better, though I'm not totally satisfied with this bit here. So I'm, I think I'm gonna pull this back and redo it just a little bit, but my spacing is a little better. The sizing is better, um, and I figured out, for those of you last time here wondering why my gauge was so off on the sleeve versus this sleeve, um, it's because this sleeve was the pulled out version of the body. I knit a version of the body that didn't quite work gauge-wise, so I pulled it out and I steamed the yarn, and then I'm using that steamed yarn to knit this sleeve. So it's yarn that's already been washed, sort of. It's been full, like it's gone through the steaming process, so it's relaxed itself. So my gauge with this sleeve, I actually ended up not doing what I said I was gonna do. I didn't need to cast on extra stitches because um, this yarn was already bigger than the other yarn because it kind of relaxed in the steam bath. So that's why the gauge was different. It was driving me crazy. I was like, why is this? The other sleeve looked so tight and kind of like tidy and weird. Um, and it was just because of the steaming. <sighs> Go figure, right? So I just went back to the regular pattern, regular number of stitches, and I just did my decreases in the right order, so I should be able to reach all the way up to the top. But the reason that I'm still on Sleeve Island is that I'm realizing I need to do a little math to make sure that my body decreases for the armhole and then my sleeve cap for the armhole are going to line up. So I need to sit down and have like a morning to myself, which I haven't had too many of lately because of the semester, um, to actually sit there and do the math. So more on that later. But that's when I've, one of the things I've been knitting. I'm still working on my Joker and the Thief shawl and 
I was swatching with some of Dawn's beautiful yarn. So the one thing I was curious about, and I'm curious about this for a lot of you who are knitters, I tend to be a monogamous knitter, like I knit on one thing. And I was realizing the, day, the other day that a part of that is because my short-term memory is pretty good. Like I can get into a pattern and kind of pick it up and remember where I am and just kind of like do what I need to do. But if I have multiple patterns going, projects going at once, I have a lot of trouble switching between them because I, t I think I tend to rely so much on my short-term memory for each project. And yes, I've heard from so many of you that you, you keep really good notes for yourself so that you can go back to a project. But I really do find that it takes me so long. If I go away from a project for any more than like a day or so, it takes me so long to kind of remember where I was. And I'm really curious, has anybody else experienced that? Am I like alone in this? Um, maybe that's why I'm a monogamous knitter because I find it difficult to switch between. I don't know, I'd be curious to know how you guys do it. Um, maybe some of you are just like savants and you can kind of like move between patterns with no trouble, but it takes me a lot of time to adjust and kind of get back in. I'm learning because I do have a couple things on the needles at once right now and I'm trying it to see if I can make it work. So we'll see. Um, okay, so how about we go to a little uh, Norwegian designers real quick and then the books that I have for you. So Norwegian designers, and I've heard from many of you, there are a few really uh, kind of famous in the knitting community and beloved uh, knitters and designers out there uh, who are Scandinavian or um, Norwegian or spe like specifically work on Norwegian tradition. Um, and those are, the ones that are on, on the top of my head are like Arnie and Carlos, um, uh, Paper Tiger, who's uh, Diana Walla, and um, Skein Deer Knits are some of the big ones that I always think of. And actually, I have a Diana Walla sweater. Hang on a second. <laughs> so I realized the other day that I, I had already knit a Norwegian sweater that I had kind of forgotten about. Um, and this is by Diana Walla, and it is the Iba Pullover. And it's a traditional kind of Norwegian design in that you knit the body all the way up with this pattern, all, which goes all the way around the back. And then you steek it. You steek it open, you pick up stitches, and you do your sleeves. So if I were to turn this inside out, you could see my steek in there, which is this guy. See all this little extra stuff? And my wonderful friend and guildmate Beth helped me uh, with her surging sewing machine to <laughs> make sure that the uh, the steak wasn't going to come out because I was kind of panicking about it. I did a reinforced crochet um, chain to make sure that it would be fine, but then she went back in with the sewing machine. So, and then you pick up stitches and you knit your sleeves down. So I just had totally forgotten about that. So speaking of Norwegian designers, I can highly recommend Diana Walla and this particular pattern, the Eba pullover, which I absolutely love. And this is knit in Quince and Company. I can't remember the yarn. Sparrow, maybe? Owl? Mm, it's Quince and Company, which is a lovely, lovely yarn. Um, but I also discovered one other designer, thanks to um, Jenna and Culliford of the Boost Your Knitting uh, Year Two Techniques, which I have, she gifted me uh, a chance to check that out um, when I did a blog spot for her uh, back earlier this year. And the Year of Techniques number two is over and the book is out and you can download it on Ravelry. Um, and it's a wonderful series of um, different techniques and then projects that go with those techniques to kind of help you build up your knitting repertoire. Uh, but she featured uh, a designer that I went and checked out and her name, let me get it right here, is Tori uh, Seierstadt and she's a Norwegian designer and she had a beautiful hat pattern in the um, tutorials that Jen had. Uh, and it is called the Maragoni hat, and it's a colorwork hat, and it's truly beautiful. And there's, um, Jen, as always with the Boost Your Knitting, offers um, tutorials for each of the techniques, which you can check out on YouTube ahead of time. Um, and anyone can check those out. So I would highly recommend you check out the Jen Arnold Culliford's Boost Your Knitting techniques on YouTube. They're great. And there's one for this, one or two for this hat, actually. Um, and so that was another designer that I thought I'd want to mention to you guys, because if you look at her portfolio on Ravel Ravelry, it's just gorgeous. Sweaters, hats, just tons of different stuff. Um, so that's uh, Tori Sayerstadt. I think I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I tried to go to the Booster Knitting website and figure it all out. Um, but I'd recommend checking out her patterns too. Uh, and if you guys have other recommendations for um, Norwegian designers, I'd love to hear them. I will gladly post over on the blog in the Ravelry group um, a big list so that people can have a, a sense of like who's out there and who's knitting and who's designing um, in this tradition. So 
The next little bit is about some books that I got that are Norwegian specific. And you guys know me, I'm kind of like a bibliophile. I love my books <laughs> and almost as much as my yarn. <laughs> uh, and they last forever, so that's why I continue to collect them. So I've got a huge stack of books here that I kind of want to talk to you about a little bit. So I'm going to try to go through them um, kind of quickly. Uh, and if you have other questions, please just post them in the Ravelry group, send me an email, anything like that. Um, but I'm going to give you a kind of highlights reel of Norwegian knitting books in case you're interested in, in this kind of thing. And I'm going to start with just a couple of the simpler ones. Um, I've talked about this one before. This is the Judith Dallin um, Knitting Norwegian Sweaters, Complete Instructions Including Translation Guide. And this is one that I've talked about because it's kind of like a foundational text for Norwegian knitting. Um, it not only has the kind of hows and whys of like why Norwegian sweaters are the way they are and how to um, kind of interpret the patterns, but she also has a translation guide in the back. So if you don't happen to, happen to have the book um, Knitting Languages, which is a great book if you want to translate um, any kind of pattern, uh, she has translations for the Norwegian knitting terms in the back of this book. So if you're looking for a basic guide for like how, what are the traditional techniques, how do I translate the patterns? Judith Dallin's book. It's pretty much in everyone else's bibliography of like what you need if you're going to try to do some Norwegian knitting. Um, then there's this cool book um, by Annika uh, Seaborn Bonn, and it's called Norwegian Knitting Designs. And this is actually mostly a chart and pattern book. So um, not as many, there's a little bit of introductory material, but primarily it's charts and charts that you know show up in different projects. So there's a sock, um, and then the entire, I mean, the rest of the book is just all charts. So if you're looking for a book um, that's gonna give you charts for uh, some of the Norwegian sweaters that maybe you've seen, uh, more traditional patterns, you know, snowflakes and things like that, this is the book to get because it will have all those um, patterns in chart form for you. Um, okay, what else have I got here? Uh, this one is great. This is from 1990. Um, it's called Sweaters, 28 Contemporary Designs in Norwegian Tradition uh, by Tony Takli and Lisa Kolstad. And I, I recognize both their names as people who have done a few different um, knitting books. So it's a little bit uh, definitely 90s, gotta love it. Um, but I found a couple things in here that I thought were really, really great. One is this little jumpsuit. I kind of want to figure out how to knit an adult version of that because I feel like I need a jumpsuit like that in the winter and I just absolutely love it. It's just like, I feel like everyone needs a knitted jumpsuit. It's kind of like, it's a must have. And then there's this guy, the big, big triangle. And you can't really see it too well. Sorry, my lights are getting in the way here a little bit. You can't see it too well there, but this is what it kind of looks like when it's expanded. <laughs> it's just a funky pattern. Um, I'm really into like thinking about knitting designs that are like outside the box, kind of like um, Bristol Ivy has a book called uh, Knitting Outside the Box, I think. Um, and I'm uh, curious about those kinds of patterns that just do different things with knitting. So this one is mostly a pattern book, um, some uh, charting in the back, and just a lot of like inspiring and interesting ideas. If you're interested in like, Norwegian knitting in tradition and from the 90s. I mean, it's a pretty great little time capsule book. Uh, I absolutely love it for those reasons. And that was from Beth. Thank you, Beth. Beth. I think it was Beth or Debbie um, found that and gave that to me. A uh, couple other ones for you. Um, I found this one to be super useful. It's kind of a combination of all those books in a way. And this is Norwegian Sweater Techniques for Today's Knitter by Therese uh, Chenoweth. And I think this is kind of like the go-to book if you're interested in trying to get into Norwegian knitting um, because the entire first third of the book, it just covers everything um, in, a, in a lot greater detail than the Judith Dolan book. Um, so like shaping the neckline, what are your options for sleeves, um, how do you deal with shoulders, um, different things about steaking, sleeve facings, uh, you name it, like how to sew your sweater together. Uh, with sewing machine and with hand knitting and sewing, like mattress stitch and things like that. Um, like tips and tricks for like when things go wrong. It's, it's like the whole entire first third of the book is just about how to knit better, especially if you're working in the Norwegian tradition. So it's kind of like Judith um, Dallin's book, like 
like magnified. And then the latter part of the book is tons of different sweater patterns, which may or may not interest you depending on what your style is. Um, but I always find that sweater patterns are great because you can look at them, you can read them, and I learned a lot about knitting and design just by reading a lot of patterns. People often ask me, like, how did you get into modifying and designing? Well, like, I just took patterns and I would, half the time I would read them and not knit them, I would just read them and think about how they would work, you know, like, do the math and kind of figure it out. So, so this is a great book if you're interested in the technique and in a few patterns to kind of practice on or think about. Um, and then I have my, my friend uh, Layla in Norway um, sent a little package to me. We decided to do a yarn swap and she sent some beautiful um, yarn from Indie Dyers and from um, a couple of the local mills to her. And I was gonna pull out one of the skeins for you to see. I'll grab that in a second. But she also sent um, an Anamor uh, Sunbo book which is Invisible Threads in Knitting. And this, along with um, the other Sondebo book that I showed you earlier in the Rare and Hard to Find series, um, it's an amazing gift because <laughs> this is exactly what I love reading about. It's like the traditions and the histories and where the techniques come from and what are the kind of like stories behind the yarn. So there's very few patterns in this book. Um, it's just so much more about the knitting tradition. And I'm gonna put it, at this point, I'm putting it right next to my bedside like on my little table and I'm just gonna read a little section every night and kind of savor it. Um, but this is, Anamor Sunbo is um, the one who, uh, if you'll remember back in another episode, I talk about her other book, she basically bought an old uh, woolen mill and found the scrap pile and realized that there was tons of history in that scrap pile going back to the World Wars and she started working up patterns from the scraps that were left over and charting kind of knitting history and thinking about um, the companies and the people and the traditions. And so there's a, there's, um, a couple of our other books which are amazing and this one is just as cool. So thank you so much, Layla. This is like a truly treasured gift. <laughs> I really appreciate it and I can't wait to just kind of like read it bit by bit. Um, so those are some of the Norwegian books that are out there. There are also, of course, um, pattern books from back in the day, like this is from Dalagarn, uh, and it is Knit Your Own Norwegian Sweaters, a little bit of technique, a lot of great kitschy kind of value here. Um, but some cool sweaters nonetheless, and some awesome patterns. Um, if, you can, if you can get past the styling, I think you'd find that there's a lot of really interesting stuff in here um, about Norwegian traditions. So, tons of great stuff out there and that's just a little peek into some of the books um, that might be helpful if you're trying to knit Norwegian sweaters or Norwegian kind of accessories and I know there are um, plenty of folks who are doing um, mittens there's the Selbu mittens um, book that's just come out I think Patricia of um, P4 Chen on uh, Instagram she is in Norway and she's done a lot with Norwegian wool and talking about Norwegian like tradition with mittens and socks. Um, so I would highly recommend checking that stuff out. I'm mostly thinking about sweaters, so that's where I'm going with the books. Um, but there's tons of other stuff out there for accessories. Um, and Norwegian knitting just seems, like all of Scandinavian knitting, just seems to have a lot um, to offer us in this Knits in Translation series. So there you have it. And Layla, if you're watching, your package is going to go out on Monday, and I can't wait for you to get your swap um, from some fun farm yarns and things in the U.S. So, speaking of farm yarns, the last segment of the cast is exactly what you've been waiting for, because Don Brown of Independence Wool sent a beautiful package for um, giveaway, and I'm going to turn it into two giveaways, because it's just so much stuff. <laughs> so we're gonna do two winners for this giveaway. But let me show you some of this yarn. Um, so so uh, the Independence, um, Independence Wool is out of Texas, out of Independence, Texas. And you can read all about Dawn's um, career before she started the mill and then what she's looking for in the mill and the fact that her family has a long tradition in Texas of, of sheep and milling and 
Uh, it's just a really great um, story, basically, and you can read all about it on the blog. Um, but a few of the things that Dawn is interested in in Independence Wool is kind of fostering the local wool economy, kind of fostering local farms, um, and helping them to process their yarn in her mill in small batches. Um, but she also does has her own flock, and she also uh, makes her own yarns out of uh, yarns that are out of wool and and um, fiber that she's sourced uh, in mostly in Texas but around the country as well um, and so she has a line of mohair which is gorgeous I've never knit with mohair before and I told her that I was like I'm kind of a mohair virgin and I'd love to try your mohair um, and so she sent some of that and she sent some for Texas tweed light and let me show you what's going on here so the Texas Tweed Light is 50% um, mohair and 50% kid merino. Let's see if this will focus in. Yep. Uh, and it's 200 yards um, for each skein. And there are these cute little tags that come along with it. Um, and she puts a little pasture of origin in there so you can kind of get a sense of like where the locality of this yarn is. So this is the Texas Tweed Light, which is a beautiful kind of squishy two ply yarn um, and this is I this is one of my favorite colors in the whole world can you tell <laughs> can you tell I like purple um, and then this is some of the mohair and I'm hoping the camera can focus on that I mean the luster on that is pretty incredible and the mohair is a two ply as well so I took these two God, they're so nice and I started knitting up a little swatch because I'm hoping to design a little something um, either for myself or for Dawn um, and we'll see. But I wanted to show you how this yarn knits up. So this is the Texas Tweed Light on the top here. And I started with a size 6 needle and decided I liked, uh, wanted to have a closer fabric, so I switched to a size 5 needle. I did a little color work with the mohair, and then I did some brioche. And I had a feeling that the brioche would be the way to go. And I just have to say, this is absolutely the way to go with this. So the pattern's going to be a little brioche. That's the Texas Tweed Light side. And that is the mohair side. And I hope the camera can pick up on that because this is just, it's like, it's what the yarn wants to do. It just wants to squish. Like, it wants to be brioched. So I think I'm going to have to do a pattern that turns that turns on the brioche factor a little bit with this yarn. Um, so I'll keep you posted on that. But that is a little bit about how it knits up. So what Dawn sent is a huge package. And what I want to do is split it up between a couple people because it just is so, it's so good. It's so much goodness. So what we're going to do is split the giveaway between two winners. And the first prize pack includes this t-shirt, which is a Dawn Brown original. This is uh, Women Wool Workers United. And it is just like one of the coolest t-shirts. Um, slogans. I just want to get behind it so much. And on the back it says, Independence Wool? Yes. So package one includes that t-shirt and a skein of the Independence Wool mohair, which you can see here is just incredible. I mean, it is like haloed and lustrous and just so gorgeous. So that's prize pack number one. Prize pack number two includes two skeins. One, which is the range base of Rambouillet and Mohair, which is this guy. Let's see if the camera can do it. Yeah. And then a skein of the Texas Tweed Light. And I think on that one we'll have to throw in the little Independence Goat <laughs> pin, which is super adorable. So that's two prize packages from Dawn Brown of Independence Wool. You can try out the Mohair, you can try out the Texas Tweed Light. Both of which I think are sold out right now in her shop, so we are like so lucky to have them here with us. Um, and I'm so excited to be able to give a, give them away to give somebody else a chance to knit this stuff up um, because it is gorgeous. Uh, so what should you do? What should you do to enter the giveaway? Leave a comment. <laughs> Leave a comment here, over on the Ravelry thread for the giveaway, or on the blog. Uh, answering the question like what are you curious about um, learning about like milling like what you know milling yarn the production of yarn like what are some of the like, questions that you have about how yarn is produced and what are some of the things that go into it um, anything about the production of yarn any kind of question uh, if you post here on the blog or on the Ravelry thread I will enter you to win one of those two prize packs and I will draw the winner in two weeks time
So thank you so much, Dawn. It's been lovely, lovely to talk to you and to um, try your yarn and to share it. So I'm so excited about that. And I think that's about it. Oh, you guys are probably wondering, since I was talking about brioche, I put my um, Rebel 2 shawl up here uh, by Leslie, Robin Leslie Robinson. Yeah, uh, I knit it a long time ago. It's a beautiful brioche shawl, and I just thought, well, we need a little brioche accent. <laughs> so on that note, I wish you all happy knitting and spinning or crafting, whatever it is that you're doing, and thanks for spending some time with me. I will see you in a couple of weeks. Take care. Mm -hmm.